So once you've joined all three fully, you end up with a rectangular shape just like this, or well, ideally you end up with this. Uh, depending on your tightness or looseness, this might sort of change a little bit in the proportions, but essentially this is what you end up with. And so the next step would be doing a single lock, just a normal single lock. Just like this. And don't worry about being too loose at this stage. It will all come together later on. And you continue like this all the way around take special care of the corners sometimes you might lose your other on the corners then you have to fix it somehow so I normally start close to a corner if I for one reason or another lose my other I can fix it on the corner again and um, next I'll show you how to do it how to do the sides so this is what you end up with once it's been locked off with a single lock all the way around. I'll show you the other side so you can see a bit more clearly. It looks a bit like a bird's nest at the moment. So this is the underside and eventually you will weave on the outside but to basically go back up, you, you work your way on the inside first and just with a flat base kitty from your single lock you just start anywhere really you just weave it back up like so so if you have done a single uh, a flat base kitty this should be familiar so you end up something like this. I go back and do it one more time. So one more time. So the one at the moment, as you can see, the dull side is up, shiny side. We want the shiny side on the inside. So we turn the dull up and weave it in. Same the next one. Now there might be different ways of how you do this, uh, people tend to do it like this, and then come down, up, down, turn it over, cross, up, down, up, down. I personally, I just weave it in like this. But that's really up to you and I go probably as high as this which is about three high all the way around and tighten it as I go so that the outside looks something like this and the first lot I put a peg on so I go all the way around and once I've done that, I weave further up and then I lock it off, but we get to that in a minute. So this is as far as we got now. So we've woven up the sides, about three rows, takitahi only, and so it doesn't look like a bird's nest anymore. And um, if you're anything like me, by now your back will be hurting like hell, especially your shoulders, and you're ready for your cup of tea. But we're not quite finished yet. So. Now that we've done the inside, it is easier to weave on the outside. It's just easier that way. So you just go up, um, you know, either two or three rows at a time to about oh, up to 10, 12 rows, really depending on, on the width of your fenu. I'm using 12 millimeter width, but if you have any larger or wider or smaller, you might have to vary it 
and we're just going to go up to about your high. How much is that? Roughly about seven inches, 18 centimeters, kind of height before you lock off. And I'll see you there. So here we are, woven up to about seven inches. Hang on. Yep, 18 centimeters. And now we're ready to lock off. So as you can see, the bottom is quite gappy. Well, the sides are actually quite tightly woven and so that is to keep the shape as it is at a rectangular and uh, we just do a simple double lock with a free finish and then we're done with it sounds easy should be easy so it's just um just a really simple one Even those there. So we just do one, two, three, four, and up. And obviously, you leave the top up. So when you finish doing this, you can do your fitty at the end. And that's basically it. That's all I have up. So here we are, finished product. As you can see, just the fitty on the outside, nice and stable. And with that method of having medium, short and long, where they are and how long they are, we have minimal wastage. So as you can see, all these little bits and pieces, that's the only waste I have. And, and that's the end bit, that's where I join the fitty up. So all that needs to be done is just tidy these sides. And then it's ready for baby, essentially.